We are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Did you miss this rally? Well, here's the hook. You haven't missed anything. Just started. Cardano, Polkadot, all coins that we've talked about. Ethereum and Bitcoin just getting going. ETH to 2000, right? So ETH to 2000 by February 22nd. Want to know more? Stay right here. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live and smash the like button. Okay, let's welcome who's on the stream here. We have Bull Runner first here, Zoran, Croatia in the house. Bart from Amsterdam, welcome. Aiken, SFG, what's up? We have Mr. Gaming from Nigeria, welcome. Samad, hi. We have Donato, Chris Cotta, right? Happy Friday, all buy the dips and have a great weekend. That's what I could have said yesterday, right? Driftless, JNO, Rugby Performance Labs, right? Kim Craig, Arafat, Reverend Flashback, Pancakes, Carpe Diem, welcome. RC Rex, the sports hobbyist, welcome to the show, right? Norway's got my back. I appreciate that. Nico, what's up? All right, so the market's up. You feel like you missed it. You haven't missed anything. It's not too late. It's not too early. You're right on time, specifically for crypto, okay? Everybody in the institutional world has to buy crypto. They have to get out of stable coins, which is why this market is moving like this, and it's not going to stop. And oh, by the way, here comes the recession. Let's get into it. Now, Recession signals grow as consumers struggle to pay bills. So basically, consumers have pushed everything out on credit card. They pushed everything out on credit card and employment growth is rolling over. Okay. While debt driven consumption is at its high and rolling over, meaning people cannot push out more on credit cards. They cannot. This brings the Fed tightening to a brutal end very soon. Okay. So crypto can move before the legacy markets. Like, I don't care what the Fed says. I don't care what stocks do. Okay. This is done. We'll have more in the PowerPoint on housing and what it can mean for crypto. Right. And I've also got more on this disaster in Pennsylvania and what it means for GLDN and Bark. Two tokens I own, I actually work there. Okay, Don't go anywhere. If you want to know what the next big coin is, in my opinion, that I invested in, I'll tell you about it. Meanwhile, Bitcoin's future depends on a handful of mysterious coders. Wait, you mean it's not totally decentralized? Yeah, it's decentralized, but somebody has to manage the code. Known as the maintainers. He and four other codes, coders serve as stewards of Bitcoin Core, an open source program that keeps the crypto's ledgers up to date on thousands of computers that make up the network. Their longtime leader departed Thursday, reducing the group size from five to six. Okay, what's the point? Every project has to have somebody that helps run it. Everybody, and that includes Bitcoin, which is why this is such an interesting article from the Wall Street Journal. So I'm not knocking Bitcoin, but I think it means we got to stop knocking altcoins like this. Oh, ETH is not decentralized. Like I'm on this major podcast with some guy giving me a hard time about ETH not being decentralized. I mean, the market went straight up after that conversation. Straight up. Meanwhile, Starbucks and Polygon NFTs are selling for thousands of dollars. So little guy innovates, big guy wins. This is apparently some sort of rewards program from Starbucks and early adopters are flipping the NFT stamps for $2,000 a piece. So of course, if you can actually navigate the Polygon ecosystem, I am not having fun with it, by the way. 
Matic has retraced half of its decline, and I'm inclined to take profits there and move them somewhere else. But this idea where big players are using Polygon, right, as a network, I mean, it makes sense. It's really cheap for people to get in, particularly if they're not crypto players. It brings the crypto players pouring in because they basically buy the mint or front run everything. And then they sell it to anybody who's FOMOing in late. But again, try selling one of these things. You know, oh, it says, oh, the you know, you can sell it for 0.6 ETH. Good luck getting that 0.6 ETH back out of the Matic sort of bridge. But the point is, Web3 is now in the hands of the Starbucks type guys. So everyone's like, oh, crypto's dead, blah, 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 whatever. Whatever. Starbucks NFT is going for $2,000 a piece. I mean, that's that's unbelievable, unbelievable, okay? Sony wants in. What do you think this is going to do to all these layer ones and all these gaming platforms, right? Steppen is trying to come back, right? They're trying to, you know, airdrop between 18, 1800 and $14,000 worth of GMT tokens for people who were early adopters in this. I know people, I, I swear to God, they all lost 40 pounds. They got the NFT. They walked everywhere. They got paid like $600 a day, right? And then, of course, like all of these things, you know, the smart money dumps it on retail. Now they're going back to the people who originally bought or bought the NFTs early, and they're trying to get them back in the game. This does not feel like a dead crypto world to me. World Government Summit suggests crisis events are a useful path to globalism. How nice. This is a reminder. Be your own bank. Have your own plan. Not your keys. Not your crypto. Okay? Okay. One of the obstacles, whoops. One of the obstacles to achieving globalization and a new world order, okay, is people thinking for themselves, okay? In other words, if you, want, um, if you want America first or freedom first or, you know, whatever you want, they don't want you doing crypto. And guess what? It's going to backfire on them. It's already backfiring on these guys and Gensler. Do you realize the World Economic Forum and what these clowns said two months ago is actually now starting to permeate through the world and through the like social media, these guys, they want to control everything. They want to control everything. And, and they're, they're telling you that. Well, guess what? They're not controlling crypto. Okay. To, for your comedy, the SEC sues Doquan. Hey guys, we need you to police this before everything goes to zero. We need you to police it before it goes to zero. Everything that the SEC does just do the opposite, right? They're, they're suing broke people. They're attacking stable coins. And what they're doing is, is they're pushing massive amounts of liquidity out of stable coins into crypto, which is why every dip gets bought. And when people miss the dip, they FOMO in so hard, you get the type of price action we had today. Combined with the fact that, you know, things are just waking up because people are still bearish. You're like, Bill, there's green everywhere. How could people be bearish? Well, it's simple. Coinbase downgraded ahead of earnings on treacherous outlook. Dun, 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 dun. It's treacherous out there. Yeah, it's treacherous out there as everything is up 12% in one day. Don't forget who's in charge of your life. European Union hands $3.5 million to George Soros' Open Society Foundation. One of the best ways to control your life is to be a player in the digital asset market. Because if you don't control your life, he will. He will. All right, let's go.
Let's go see who's who else is here. Steve J. <laughs> FDIC does not have the funds to cover deposits bank run. Really funny you mentioned that about FDIC. I think if there was ever a mass calamity and people think that they just push a button and the FDIC pays them all their money back, actually, that's not how it works. I used to work in retail. Actually, FDIC will pay you out over time. Lot more crypto. Roosevelt Jones, Northern Virginia. Welcome. Kansas City is here, right? Bubba, welcome back. Justin, Big Rich, okay? Tito, hey, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, okay? <laughs> Carpe is the only show in crypto, not even close, right? That means the only show in crypto you need to hit the like on. I like that, right? I like that. Okay, Lawn Shark 423 is here. Okay. You're never too late. You're never too early. You're right on time. Italy is in the house. Madrid checking in. UK, London, crypto and the matrix. Marco from Estonia, right? James Ostrom says he just can't get enough. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Tell your friends. You know, the funny thing is, I, I actually think that you guys know I'm here. I don't think like kind of the rest of the world knows I'm here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we as a collective group have like nailed this market and, and they're going to find us all one day. Okay. Charts. PowerPoint. Okay. Rocking some, so like your, you can call this like your weekend chart package. U.S. new home sales monthly. Down only with the Williams Oscillator predicting a big move is coming. Okay. New home sales, it's going to crash. Crash. Right. There's going to be a month, probably in March, where this is just going to go snap. I got this thing on TikTok I keep talking about. Austin housing crash. I got 2,400 followers on TikTok. That thing is now at 184,000 views. The title of the TikTok is Austin, Texas, Austin housing crash, 184,000 views. Existing home sales. Hmm. Would that, if that was an old coin, would you buy it? Probably not. Okay. It's like, this is going back to like 1987 levels. Okay. Bay Area medium home prices. So housing for Web 2. See this number over here? It's like we're now at a million dollars for an average house. Can anybody in crypto, like, imagine? You know how crypto is, right? All the way up, all the way down. Okay? Is there any reason why this can't go to 500K? Like, this, this can't lose 50% of its value? Like that. I mean, it's down only now. Like if, if you put the entire tech industry, the housing for the tech industry underwater by taking out some of these levels, you know, you're going to have like a cascading effect of defaults if people can't get out of the houses. The Fed is so done. Now you're like, Bill, come on, it's Friday. Why are you being depressing? There's nothing depressing about Web 2 correcting the excess. The Fed did its job. They're done. Now we can just smoke crypto to the upside. Galaxy Digital, my favorite crypto hedge fund, right? Talking about this head and shoulders bottom possibility yesterday. It is up only today. I would love it if they would take out, say, 550, 555. It remains to be seen. Don't be shocked at the first up day in equities that this thing doesn't turn around. Get above 552. And I think this thing could wind up at 10 by the time it's time to sort of take the initial round of profits. Don't get off the bus. That's what I talked about on debate crypto. Don't get off the bus. Galaxy is a good leading indicator because it's a crypto hedge fund, right? It's a crypto hedge fund, right? So 
they have all kinds of investments across Web3. So everyone's like, oh, yeah, crypto hedge funds. Yeah, that's crypto's dead. It's a treacherous environment. Yeah, okay. It's treacherous to not participate when this thing goes from 5 to 10. So just in case you think you're like too late, oh, no, I missed it. People are st starting to wake up. They're just starting to wake up. Okay. ETHE. Anybody trading equities? Okay. ETHE. So these lines are like, you know, the, uh, the changes in the season. Okay. So down into the start of winter, up into the start of spring. Next diagonal level I got in ETH, ETHE, that's Ethereum in the equity market, is 12. It's currently at 785. Seven dollars and eighty-five cents. This could go to twelve. Okay, Jason says Matic is ripping. Yes, it is. They got the story. Now let's go back to Matic, right? So I didn't have a good experience, but I think that's the point. Matic has figured out a way to sell to people, to corporations that we can help onboard people by paying with credit cards and MoonPay, and then it's impossible them for them to get out. So whatever you sell them, they'll hodl it because they can't get out. They can get in super cheap. They could probably get out super cheap too. If they quit their job and figure out how to use the Polygon Matic, Polygon Ethereum bridge. But that said, do you realize Matic has retraced half of its decline from its high? Do you want to know where Ethereum is? If it did that, it'd be like 2,800. Bitcoin would be at 42K. Expanding triangle in Ethereum looks exactly, exactly like what I saw in 2009 after the stock market came off its lows. So 2008, great financial crisis. Uh, the Wall Street Journal wrote a review of the Batman movie. They said this was a very dark movie and it was apt because... Happy days are done and gone. That's how bad the great financial crisis was in 2008. Not the movie, our lives. Happy days are done and gone, which of course was the low and everyone hated the market and the market made an expanding triangle right here, okay, in 2009. And then it was basically a stair step higher. So it wasn't up only. But it would be like, it would go way up, it would come back down. In Ethereum, I think we're in this green part here. Okay, that's where we are right now. We're in this like up only phase where the thing blows through the top of the triangle. Okay, it's just up only. Not up only, but up consistently is what I should say. And then here, you would get these one and two and three day dips and I know because I fell for every one of them. The charts would break. I'm like, oh my God, this is going lower because of the knife experience. Right? Everyone's like, oh my God, every time it goes down, it feels like the bear market. Oh my God, FTX. Oh my God, Binance is like leaving the United States. Whatever. Whatever. It's all bullshit. The distraction from the, the disaster stuff in crypto is a distraction from price. In December, the battle cry was let's return to price. So if you look at this, right, it's up only, right, as people wake up to what's going on. This, like, this is like, this is a weekly chart, I believe, right? This is just straight up to the top of the thing. Right? I mean, ETH could go barreling through this. Now, here's the catch. No, it's not the catch. Here's the twist. Everyone's like, oh, my God, I missed it. No, you haven't. Because the reason ETH is only up 3% is because equities are down. Because they're worried about the recession. Once equities close, oh my God, forget about it. You're going to have crypto hedge funds waking up Saturday morning going, oh my God, we got to get in. And if they're not meeting Saturday, they're probably going to meet Sunday, Sunday night and be like, oh shit, we got to get in. This is happening. Bitcoin Weekly, don't mind saying it. This is like, could be a parabolic up move. Matter of fact, my chart, my, my parabola may not be parabolic enough. Somebody asked, what's a parabola? 
It's basically up only with very limited down, down ticks. Or sometimes it consolidates in sideways action. So this may be a situation where Bitcoin readjusts itself to like 30 and then goes sideways. And then from, from that point, it's just straight up through the summer. So 24, 30 ish, right? Sideways, 50, 50 at the end of the summer. Not a lot of people talking about this. And look, Maddox is doing it. Maddox doing it. Now they have some great news flow, but crypto as an investing asset, the world economic forum, chronic bearishness, people afraid of the knife experience. This is what feeds a bull market. There's a saying in legacy, the market climbs the wall of worry. Let's go up what this means. Like this, this parabola here, this is the wall of worry. It's like, oh my God, you know, there's a negative headline. If I buy it here, I'm going to get stopped out. Yeah, you might. You might get stopped out. That's why you got to get involved on down days or sideways days. Sometimes sideways to down is the dip. Or like yesterday, where it lurched up to 1720, which is a huge gain point, and then came back down. I was like, okay, that's the top I'm selling. And it goes right back up again. A reversal day is a dip. It may all happen in one day. So everyone sits around and goes, I'm worried. I'm worried. It's treacherous. I can't buy. I can't buy. 10 people say that. And then one person says, okay, F it. I'm buying. And then the second person goes up. Oh, it's up a little more. Okay. I'm buying. And then two or three people, more people go, oh, okay. Well now we really got to get involved. And by the time the last person gets in, the last person in the pool, when he says, oh, wow, there's nothing to worry about and everyone's in the pool, that's when the toaster is inbound for the pool. Meaning when everyone's in, that's when we get out. No one is in. This market is trading like absolutely no one is long and that's not going to get rectified in one day. Now, playing around with price and time tools, um, there's, a, there's a sine wave function. In trading view. Now, this probably would be a little fancier if I did it live TA, but I, I kind of made a bunch of them because I know people like PowerPoint. So it's a good PowerPoint type slide, right? So it's just a preset, right? I just connect this low, you know, connect the high, and it gives me like a sine wave. I don't, I don't draw that, it just pushes it. So I'm just sort of, and then I I played around with some fib extension stuff, right? So I started at the start of Avalanche. And I said, all right, start here, and I'll make the first time interval right there at the bottom, July of 2021. And then all these other blue lines, it draws automatically. So I'm like, wow, you know, this, this second line hits the sine wave right there. I mean, it looks just like over here. This bottom took about five to six weeks before it just accelerated. Okay, six weeks. This is the fifth week. So you wake up on Monday, okay? And can Avalanche just boop? Matic is doing it. So why isn't everyone doing it? Okay, FO Center says, would you buy ETH over BTC? Well, I can't provide investment advice, but let's just say I think Bitcoin is going to have a slower march right? Bitcoin's going to do one big lurch and then the altcoins are going to scream. So your dip for altcoins may be the God candle in Bitcoin. That's what I'm guessing. Frankly, I prefer the eats and the big cap altcoins, even though they're all up today, right? Because when people start chasing that, like no one is long that stuff. No one. Because they just killed it. Just look at Avalanche. They just killed it. Aruna says, respect the pump. Mandatory says FTX was the final flush. And Steve J is checking out DeFi Perp. Can't forget about that. Okay. 
Inflation is permanent until CBDC regime is fully implanted. Yeah, man, they love those central bank digital currencies. They're going to force that on everybody. And you know what? People are going to take one look at this. And the first time the social credit, social credit scores or the first time they take your money or lock you out of your money. I mean, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to backfire, right? We want to control everything and people are not stupid. They're not stupid. Polka dot. Connect the high, connect the low, connect the high, draw the sine wave. Interesting. Obviously, we're due for a, a swing up. Polka dot breaking out of a downward sloping wedge. So this is the bigger the base, the higher into space deluxe because they just killed this. Like they've pushed it down so far. It's like they, they, they haven't knocked it down. They knocked it down and buried it. That's what that downward sloping line looks like. And when you break out of those things, this is, this is gone, right? It's gone. Like, you know, could be talking about like, I don't know, $56 by April of 2024 when I do the FIB time work. So I connected the all time, the, the initial low where it started to the all time high and the timeline, I guess we can call them now timelines. The FIB timelines, April 2024, $56 is where the sine wave and the FIB number intersect. So for anybody who liked any of that FIB circle analysis that I'm doing, I got all these experiments and they all these indicators all point to something very similar about May of 2024, right? Like I think it's summer rally, fall crash, buy everything, all the way up into 2024. Again, that's crystal ball ish, but that's a guess. Litecoin. When Litecoin, when is it going to go up? Well, <clears throat> how about we start rocking Litecoin in June of 2023? Okay. In other words, 2016 inception to the 2018 low, you project it out, and the next big inflection point is June. Interesting that that would be fitting with the summer rally, right? You got up, you know, maybe up March, April, right? Dipsy do in May back for the summer rally. By the way, everybody will be doing sell in May and go away because everyone gets it after last year. And I'm not going to be in that camp. Like last year, I almost collapsed from exhaustion telling people to get out for selling May and go away and to get out in April, you know? And then of course the Celsius crisis came along. Everyone said everything was fine. And then I just was like, GTFO, get to the chopper. This year, everyone's gonna be like, okay, yeah, we're gonna sell in May, right? Yeah, okay, maybe for a little bit, maybe for a flash crash. I'm looking to buy the dip in May for the summer rally, as of now. GLDN. Did you know that the water supply in this small town in Pennsylvania uh, is so polluted, is so polluted that FEMA actually turned them down for federal assistance? It's like the medics in Saving Private Ryan. They just look at it and go, oh, we can't save this guy. GLDN is the native token of a commodities ecosystem. Bark is the water token. If you want to buy GLD, if you want to buy bark, if you want to buy water or be a part of the future of water where these crises can be solved by moving water in ships from Greenland to wherever it needs to go, GLDN is the ETH of that commodities universe. GLDN will eventually have its own chain. I work there. I own this. Notice how this has rallied after this disaster. Okay. People are buying the dip 38% retracement at 75 cents. We'll see what happens. Okay. The water is entirely contaminated in East Palestine, Ohio. And in the bottom right corner, our sources are saying Ontario is getting sick from the cloud and the water. They're out of HVACs and bottled water. And they're selling the bark token. 
there is a solution to this. Okay. I changed my whole career around to go work for these guys and I own all of this. So the best way to not give investment advice is just to tell people what you did. Now, believe it or not, slight digression. If water is effed, I'm wondering if food is next. We've also got the, the one year anniversary of the Ukraine crisis. Uh, I'm looking at wheat. I know, don't laugh. Like interactive brokers, old fashioned futures, right? Wheat matters, grains matter, and gold matters. Why? Because ETH is correlated to wheat and commodities. So as long as you don't have a Fed tightening like crazy, wheat and gold or grains and gold up, ETH up from statistical analysis done by a top end economist when I worked at another company. The FIB time work, this is 2000 here. This is the top in 2007. And I got a FIB inflection point really tidy March 13th. Grains, gold, water, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Corn. I'm sort of wondering, like I have a FIB inflection point here. Fib inflection point here. In 2007, there was a parabolic into this Fib inflection point. And I'm wondering if history repeats. And that's the market update. Okay, let's go to live TA, see who else is here. Okay. Driftless is in wheat, waiting to see what happens. I was talking to my boss today about like December call options. It's like something where you could like sit in it and wait. Okay, the crypto client was talking about cattle and rice. Dude, I'm sure this, this stuff's going to just smoke higher. I, I'm getting an interactive broker's account opened soon. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. East Palestine is in Ohio, not Pennsylvania. Thank you for correcting me on that. That's what I meant. Okay. That is what I meant. James Stewart is like, buy in May and stay to play. You know what I'm saying? Like accumulate when everyone else is selling. Okay. Now we're going to, we're going to DeMarc. Okay. Bitcoin daily. I'm thinking this has got five more updates. So in the DeMarc world, we count conditions. The software does it for us. So we say the high is higher than the high two days ago. And if so, we put a number on the candle. And when it happens nine times, you get nine candles. That's the first part of the trend, can be. And then you get a break. And then the next part of the trend takes off. The first part's called setup. The second part's called countdown. Now, in this particular case, we're on a four in the setup phase, which means Five more updates are possible in Bitcoin. I mean, that, that smells like up only to me. Okay. Worst case scenario, I think you're looking at like a parabolic today. Like the second equities are closed or you wake up tomorrow morning and people like this is not backing off. You get a blow off top. Okay. Bitcoin 90 minute. Best news of the day, you got a 13 top, which would slow this down for a couple of hours. Okay. And you might even get a dip. And if you do, I would suggest taking advantage of it. Now, let's move into, let's go to ETH on a daily chart. Okay. Again, it's very similar to what's going on with Bitcoin. Let me make sure. Okay. It's similar, but the 13 top didn't stop the market. Didn't stop the market, right? And you, and you see these wicks, right? Like, oh, oh, I'm worried. Oh, I'm worried. Oh, look, it's a wick. I'm worried. Oh, it's another wick. I'm worried. Yeah, okay. Okay. When they're not worried anymore, like if you go to, if you go to my Twitter, right, I get this updated. Sixteen fifty was support, which they 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 pounded on yesterday and this morning. 
1700 is resistance according to traditional TA, but when you do this diagonal GAN stuff by hand, hey, folks, there's nobody home. And I, I would not be surprised to see this thing at 2000 by February 22nd. What's stopping this thing? So everyone's like, oh my God, I missed it. Bro, you just broke through the line. If it's below 1700, in my opinion, you haven't missed it. Now I know the cardinal sin in crypto is to encourage people to follow the greed impulse. You know, and I know people are trying to make their life better and you don't want to FOMO in at resistance. I just think the support from the GAN line is more important than resistance at 1720. That's how I'm looking at it. Now, to, to, to make it sound even better, let me go to my friend Magic Internet Money who likes to quote Jesse Livermore. Okay, now he's got this whole quote here. And then right here he says, you know, men and women who can both be right and what? Sit tight are uncommon. If you can buy or get involved in a market and then the way you make the money is to like, wait, don't get off the bus. Don't get off the bus. Taking profits, paying yourself, getting a little capital, cash out a Matic, roll it into ETH. Just saying, right? But sit tight. Now, maybe with Matic, you're like, oh, I bought it at 30 cents that I'm never selling. Okay. Right? We sell in September, right? Or, or in late August. Okay. And here's our friends. Um, here's our friends in Palestine, Ohio. Okay. You take water out of the tap for granted. I would suggest reevaluating that. Okay. Gala. Let's get to, let's get to like my. Don't ask six from Oklahoma is in the house. A lot of people asking for metaverse coins. Oh my God. <laughs> in December, I'm like, hey, the metaverse is not dead. Everyone's like, oh, I want to buy an AI coin. Yes, you should. You should buy the metaverse, right? Because that's where AI is going to get monetized, right? Where do you monetize AI? Okay, so YGG on a daily chart. Okay, huge breakout, but where's the return move? The return move right now is on top of support at 36 cents. So this doesn't look like a dip. It might be. And of course, there's this idea. <laughs> They've never heard it. I, I, I got famous for it, I guess, on uh, Debate Crypto. They made me say it over and over and over again. So I'll say it on my show. The bigger the base, the higher into space. Okay, something goes up, crashes, bases. If this is as good as it, wh what you think it is, then when this thing turns around and goes up, it was down only in March from $3.50. What's the current price? Oh, it's $0.36. Cents. Oh, because it's treacherous in crypto. <gasps> Oh my God, stay away from crypto, buy an AI meme coin. Don't buy the metaverse. Come on, people. Come on, right? This is what I'm talking about. Gala. And you know, I, I don't, I don't know if it's, you know, who's don't, don't take this the wrong way. You know, who's kind of got the hot hand. Well, I like to listen to if I can catch it is Wendy. O. she found the low in Solana and last year. She was into gala. Now, of course, this got hammered like anything else. But when you see these people, you know, who know what's up, this literally could be the bigger the base, the higher in the space. And if you look at the DeMarc work on gala, this is on a three. Shit, they were selling it to you yesterday. Like, oh, yeah, we don't believe in this. Well, okay, there's resistance at 0.058. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is, Oh, they just can't stop selling this stuff, right? It's like, oh, look, just, you know, let's like push it down underwater. 
right? This has got like a bump and run property to it. It's not perfect, but not only has it got a bump and run property to it, it's also a downward sloping wedge, which is a more extreme version of the bigger the base, the higher in the space. It's like we've pushed it through the sub basement. This thing was down only from 30 cents on the way down. Now, again, I'm not trying to give Matic a hard time. I guess I should look at the coin if I'm going to talk about it the whole show. If Matic, whatever Matic can do, so can the whole rest of the market. The whole rest of the market can do this. I mean, this has gone halfway back. Halfway back. Okay. So down to 25 cents, retraced almost the entire Celsius down move with resistance at 166. If Matic can do this, and again, this is not over, probably. Look at this. You know, it, it hits a 13 top. Goes to the blow off top level and just sits there. And then it's just up only. I don't begrudge Matic five more updates. If Matic goes up five more updates, Bitcoin is going to go up 25% and ETH is going to go up more than that. Right? Okay. D5 perp. What a strange bird. Like these, these are all the same. No, they're not all the same, actually. I, I'm noticing this more and more. This is like this. I'm calling this like the polka dot Kusama formation. Right? I mean, this this feels like up only. Because this bump and run here has got everybody convinced that this is resistance. If I see another tweet going, oh my God, there's resistance right before FTX took off. Shut up. Stop it. No shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if everybody can see something, that's not what to look at. That's not what to look at. What you're looking at is that you got a bump and run. And this is not, you know, this is not the, uh, you know, I don't know. These guys have to get their tokenomics together. And maybe it's just a great contrarian play. The DeFi comes back. I mean, of course, it's, a, it's actually a good play because you're certainly not doing DeFi on centralized exchanges anymore. So these guys could figure it out and come back. There's just no, no question about it. Okay, Theta. All the DeMarc work is the same, right? You have a 13 top. It doesn't back off, and you got five more updates. Okay, on a weekly basis. Now, here's the trick with some of these smaller coins. So this is the sixth week in a row. They've been banging on this resistance level at $1.24 for six weeks. Okay, so it has to kind of take that out. If it does, you got five more up weeks. And... Fascinating enough, like if you, if you look at monthly charts, like this month will be like the confirmation that, you know, the, the bottom may actually be in. Like we're just confirming that the downtrend has ended on higher time frame charts. Okay, speaking of the bigger the base, the higher in the space, phantom face melting shit going on here, right? Face melting. You know, they got their act together and now it's just like, it's, I don't know how you chart this. I mean, you're headed for another 13 top, but all the other 13 tops, no one has cared. No one has cared, right? If you go to a weekly, see, this is sick, right? You know, you had the support was at 40 cents and they banged on this. Like they kind of pushed it down there like twice. They pushed it down there last week and they pushed it down there this week and they may be done with that. So if this is 
the bigger the base, the higher in the space, you know, this thing is entering. This is an air pocket down here. Crypto Twitter guys, I, I actually like the term. They call it like inefficiencies. Like when you go straight down, you can go straight back up again. You can. You know, should it? Could it? I, I don't know if it should. But, you know, why can't this go to a dollar? I saw, uh, I, I typed in uh, crypto hashtag shorts in YouTube. So this really slick short video of a bunch of guys going, can Phantom go back to $3? Well, if you do the bigger the base, the higher in the space on the Phantom weekly chart, of course you can. This looks like E. This looks like everything in 2019 where it was just dead. Now, I did hear BitBoy speak at his book tour in Austin, and he was right. Like this bear market, even though it was ugly, was better than the last bear market because everything died for like a year. Okay, this was only, say, six months. It's like half the time. So if you think this can't go up, you best think again. Best think again. Now, should you buy it up 20% in one day? Probably not. Probably not. Hey, okay, I see a request. Okay, so this is Trias. Trias. Okay, maybe we'll put for some variety. Okay. So again, all the way down base, right? I mean, it, it's almost like with this, you, you can't draw anything on these charts because they're so destroyed. Now, I like this Williams oscillator. It's actually really interesting that it was close to zero recently. I don't know if we went to a two-day chart. No. Okay, what I would tell you about this, if you go from a dollar to $3, In a coin that used to trade at six and a half, this is an example of the bigger the base, the higher in the space, because everybody li who liquidated inside this range or everyone who shorted it has now got to think twice. So if you were on this trend and you wanted to stay on this trend, I'd be like, okay, if you wanted to buy a dip, uh, you can try it. Why not? Because if you get a dip, you get stopped out. Like you have to manage risk. Can't be an idiot. You can be a cowboy if you've got trade location, right? Guys who bought down here can be cowboys. But if you're looking to get involved, you know, there are some, some coins that are going to do this. When they break out, they're just going to go. Okay. Up 6% is not a big update. So someone said Solana struggling. So as we noted multiple times on the show, one of the things that you have to remember is that the market is going to rally by sector in stages. Not everything goes up in one day. So with Solana, right, you could have four more up days or you could run into a 13 top. So, but I mean, if you look at the weekly chart, like you haven't got a confirmed bottom yet. That's what's amazing. Right. And if you look at a four hour chart, Solana is tired because there's resistance in front of 24. And this is what happens. People get impatient. Like, you know how many people were giving up on Polkadot? Like, we were talking, to, we're talking about this yesterday. So here's your, here's your like God candle ish in Polkadot. Thing is, you could have five more updates. 
and no one's going to want to buy it up 12%. I kind of don't blame them, but people, Magic Internet Money, like we're, we're on TA Thursday on Debate Crypto. Jesus, this guy is like, you know, polka dot, polka dot. And then I just pull this up, right? You know, this is just destroyed. Like, look at this. I mean, sometimes, like, I, I've noticed on, 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 on YouTube, like, people like to put charts up. You know, sometimes they'll be real decorative. They're real fancy. I know what they're talking about. I'm not sure the audience does. You look at this. I'm like, oh, wow. Polka dot weekly. Gee, it started out at six. It's now at seven. And there was this massive gymnastics in the middle. <laughs> I, I think the value of interoperability is higher than $7. <laughs> it goes back to gold retriever. We have massive water pollution in the United States. Don't blame climate change for South America's drought. This is unrelated to our exploding trains. Southern water customers face water supply issue for days. This is BBC. Total value of the Bark GLDN project, 14 million. It's like you, you don't even qualify as small cap until you get to 30 million. So if you go back over here to Polkadot, right? Like what is the value of this enterprise? What is the value of Avalanche? Right? What was it at the top and what is it now? I mean, seriously, it, it, it may be that simple. See, market cap of Bitcoin, 500, 500 billion, 500 billion. Total value of Cardano, 14 billion. Okay. Solana, 8 billion. Polkadot, 8 billion. You know, those are not small numbers. You know, Avalanche is still below the market cap of Sheeb and Litecoin. <laughs> right. Solana is $3 billion below Doge. I mean, seriously. I mean, Chainlink is essentially money used to buy software, and it's at three billion. Right? It's it's a token used to buy software. Right? Internet computer protocol. Two billion. Near protocol. Two billion. Are, are these large numbers compared to like, you know, like the trillion dollar market, $2 trillion market cap that we've seen in the past, right? So I like looking at this for GLDN purposes. And I love that near protocol web three ish is like worth less than stellar <laughs> worth way less than Bitcoin cash. Not that there's anything wrong with Bitcoin cash or Litecoin. Web three, like everyone's like, oh, I missed it. No, bro, you didn't. Okay, Rinky Donk, not a fan of BBC. Get that? Totally get that. I never really understood if BBC was like to the right or to the left or whether they actually managed to be in the center. Feel free to leave a comment on that and educate my American self. Okay, VeChain. Man, I love VeChain. <laughs> Problem is every time I start loving VeChain, it goes down. <laughs> I'm like the VeChain reverse indicator. I come in when it's up and I go, oh, I love VeChain. And then, boom. okay, jokes aside, I don't know, man. Supply chain, VeChain takes out, you know, 0 0.028. You know, they want to take it out. And they got three weeks to take this out. I, I think they're going to do it. Like this, this altcoin blow off top is going to be epic. Seriously, it's going to be epic. It's they're either going to do it all in five days 
or they're going to do it maybe gradually throughout the whole month of March. Right. It's either just going to be this like, like 2010 inequities, right? Like up, down. Oh, everyone's too scared. Up, down. Everyone's too scared. That is what you're going to be dealing with. Okay. This may, this may break. I kind of hope it does because I'm so tired of everyone's like, oh, there's resistance. I'm just tired of it. Philip says BBC decides who is left and who is right. Okay. And they are funded by the EU. <laughs> they have all been corrupted. Okay. Totally down. Wrong again says I can't even chart dot. Okay. Big rich sold out of Filecoin today. Cosmos. First, first of all, well, let me do Cosmos. So I, I'm on debate crypto show, right? Uh, I'm on there with uh, Frankie Candles. You know, he's a big deal, right? He's that's BitBoy's chart guy. And I put up the near chart. He's like, Bill, stop it. I feel like fumbling into near. It's not about, it is about near, and it's, but it's really about the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Now, Cosmos. There was a, a DeMarc point at $13. They broke above it, massive blow off. They came back, it held, and now they just can't stop buying it at 13. I, I mean, I, I just, I, I can't find a good reason. Well, actually I just did. So here's a 13 top on a weekly basis in Cosmos. It goes down one week and they just buy the dip. They just buy the dip. Right. In other words, everybody is looking at any dip as a way to get in. And this is equities in 2009 when nobody owned it. So Cosmos doesn't look like it's doing anything except dip buyers are active. And there's no sign of a top, at least not on the daily chart. There's no sign that the trend has even restarted again, which means it could restart. Right. Because the one thing we have not seen yet is we haven't seen like ETH and the whole like Web3 complex start moving all at the same time. Like we haven't seen the big, big cap surge. Like it'll be like Bitcoin and then Solana or Polkadot or Avalanche. And then ETH will jump up 5% and then the small coins will rally. But we haven't seen like near Solana Avalanche like 15% in one day. That's coming. I'm just saying it. it's coming. Okay, Philip is into NMR. I do have it. Okay, this is dip science, right? DeMarc work at 2483. Okay, support down here at 1846. So they ram it to resistance, they wick it, they take it down, they stop everyone out. But look at this, right? This this goes back to what I've been saying in small altcoins, okay? When you see them spiking it here and here, okay? Once everyone gets out, when they break it out and they come back down to where everybody was like, oh God, thank God it's rallied, I can get out. That becomes the floor. This could happen in small alts. There's a lot of small alts that every time they wick up, people sell. If you can sort one from the other or you own one and you want to take a shot, take a shot, man. Take a shot. Okay. What's up, Docs, is it always looks like someone is selling off when there's so much volume. Okay. So that's in Solana. Okay. Secret. Okay. Resistance at 84 cents. <clears throat> I'm getting to the point. I'm getting to the point like this, this is secret on Kraken weekly. There's the 13 bottom and this week will confirm the 13 bottom is in. Like this looks overbought, right? This is like, oh, wow, there was resistance. You know, maybe the title of the stream should have been just F resistance, like F it. If everybody can see it, it's probably wrong. 
and I'm getting to the point, I don't want to get ridiculous, but you see how this thing has been pounding on resistance for like, you know, I don't know, like, like since January, it's pounding on the door, but it's not going down. Every time it goes down, people buy it. Now, back in the bull market, back when it was, you know, hey, hey, hey days, <clears throat> you would find some coin, it would come to resistance, and you would buy it underneath resistance because when it went through resistance, you couldn't figure out the trade location. It would just, you know, God candle through, and then you're like, oh, shit, you know, where's the support? Where do I get long? How do I locate my trades? So it actually paid to like jump in below resistance. Now that's a pretty, that's, you know, that's, that's some serious cowboy action. This is not 2021. Okay. That said privacy on secret network, you know, NFTs last year at consensus, they released a full length movie. You can trade NFTs without the whole world knowing what you're doing. You know, it may actually be time to buy resistance, right? Don't buy a parabolic, but you can buy resistance. You can try. Okay. So ICP. Okay. There's your nine bottom, which we noted right on top of support. You know, this thing goes to like a massive blow off top level at 782. You know, it, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I, I can't possibly buy this. This is up too much. It's not up at all. This is not, this is nothing. It's like, you can't, this is a daily chart. Like, this is what I pulled up for Frankie Candles in near. Like, I was just like, yeah, okay, here's ICP. Okay. Should you buy this at this resistance point? No. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about buying it after it's up 20%. Okay. The, the buy and res off resistance was actually here, right? Where you buy it where everyone was afraid. And then when no one's afraid, okay, then maybe you take the money. But everyone's like, oh, this is up a lot. No, it's not, right? This, this is what we did with Nier yesterday. Okay, oh, Nier, wow, okay. Nier's not doing much, it's underperforming. Well, this could be wave one up, wave two up. You could have wave three up to, to definitely a new high above 280. You're like, wow, this has gone up a lot from $1.20. This is Nier. This is what I showed on this technical analysis show. It's like, hey, people, the bigger the base, the higher in the space. This thing has been in basing mode. I mean, true death was in November, but this hasn't done anything for a, a long time, right? I mean, you're talking about being in this like range, however you want to draw it, right? This thing comes out of this range. I remember back in the heyday, we're like, whew, thank God we bought near at six, right? We got near on a dip because it's going to 20. Well, it went to 20. You know, now no one wants to talk about it. You know, the first announcement that such and such person has a partnership with any of these blockchains, right? Go back to this. You know, Bitcoin's future depends on a handful of mysterious coders. You know, when Amazon makes an, uh, an agreement with Avalanche, they, they're not making an agreement with the machine. There's people there who are like, I want to advance this project forward. Just like the, the company I work at, Emerging Asset Group, you know, they want GLDN to do well. They want their coin and their project to create economic value. So, I mean, do we really think that the guys who, who did near protocol are just going to say, oh, well, you know, we give up. Wait, did this collapse today? Did I get, did, did I miss something after I just went on that whole tirade? Okay, no, it's a data error. Okay, so again, this is your bigger the base, the higher in the space for near protocol. Okay. Jason, hello. Aiken, what's up? Okay. Aiken was waiting for 11 to 13K in Bitcoin. You know, now he'll take 23 to 25. Okay. Carpe Diem is happy with the show. We're glad you're here. Okay. Nate is also here. 
Aurora. Okay, I'll, I'll look up the symbol on that. Oh, K3PR. Man, I remember this. Let's go over here. Some reason I can't get that pulled up. <laughs> Dr. R says, Bill, love the stream. Can you do magic? Uh, no, no, but I'm not opposed to doing stand up comedy. Okay. Somehow, some way, I got to make that happen. Got to get into the infotainment business. It's just way too much comedy in crypto to leave that on the table. You know, it's like everyone at, everyone in, everyone out, everyone back in again. <laughs> People are like, what can you teach them about crypto? That's it, man. Everyone in, everyone out, everyone back in again. Okay, so we have optimism, right? And we did some hidden pivot analysis on this. 265 was an important level, naturally. They took it up and took it back down yesterday. Scared everybody. Well done. Everyone out. Oh, 265 holds. Everyone back in again, looking for $4.40. Not going to stop. Not going to stop. Not going to stop. Okay. In other words, they're going to buy some of this stuff until it, it hurts. And then people are going to have to FOMO in. People were looking at like Glimmer, right? GLMR. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. I think that's Moonbeam. Sorry. False breakout of the bottom end of the range. Probably going to go take out the top at 70 cents. This is a regression band, I believe. Just they're not going to stop this, right? You know, the, the higher it goes, the harder it gets to psychologically figure out the trade location, which is why I think you have to go to like diagonal based TA. Okay. Hidden pivot analysis. Been saying this for a while that if QNT can get above 140, right? Right. If it gets above 140, I don't see any reason why you can't hit 275 or 280, depending on how you draw this. This is a big battle here, right? Don't underestimate payment systems, right? Now, I got to cover it because I think people just want it. I actually looked on my site today, and there's a lot of people searching for XRP. Okay. So here's XRP on a daily basis. Now, this hasn't done anything for a while. But this is a pretty clean square base, right? Now they've broken out of the bottom. They've tried to break out of the top. They just got everybody frustrated in this, right? This has been the range. They did this big move over here in October and November of last year, and then they dropped it right back into the range. But when you look at this, right, the bigger the base, the higher into space. This is just an odd shaped thing because they had this outlier where they went outside the base. But really, since May, it's been dead. It's been dead. So everyone's like, oh, well, QNT or, or XRP or is good or no good. People, bigger the base, the higher in the space applies to just about anything where you can produce a major catalyst and then follow on news flow, right? Tito saying, don't forget to hit the like button. Steve is saying XTZ could be next. You know, a lot of people talk about stable coins or CBDCs, excuse me. I'm just wondering if the government's actually going to build those blockchains or whether they're going to actually use the Tezoses or the Stellars of the world. I mean, I remember way back when, when 
people would just like talk about Tezos as the possible test net for the digital euro. Like I know CBDCs are awful and we don't want to talk about them, but are they real? Is the government really going to build all these blockchains or are they going to go to the private sector and do it? So, you know, everybody obviously gave up on this, right? They all, they all look the same. I was like, oh, I missed it all. You know, oh, okay, yeah, you missed zero to a dollar. That's what you missed. Don't tell yourself that you missed it. Okay. Okay. April, May, 2024, some astrological stuff going on. Big surprises. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. If that's like a major, major mania in crypto and in grains, right? Grains, metals, and ETH. Okay. All right, friends, thanks for tuning in. Remember, the bigger the base, the higher in the space. You're not too late. You're not too early. You're right on time. Okay? Don't get off the bus. Take profits, yes. Manage risk, yes, yes. Don't FOMO into coins up 20%. Buy resistance if you can, not buy a parabolic. Not investment advice, but it may be time to start buying when things are underneath resistance. And finally, don't get off the bus. Crypto. We'll see you Monday.